Hello. Welcome, um, everybody, to our webinar of how to turn your family data into a family history poster. Um, this is a relatively few months old um, feature for us that we've added, being able to make a poster with all your data without having to log in with an Ancestry account. So we're pretty excited about it. Um, it's been going great. We've seen a ton of posters coming through. And so we're extra excited today to show you guys just how it works and give you some tips so that you can make your own poster soon, hopefully. Um, thanks for joining in. My name is Laurel Link. It's nice to meet you. <laughs> and um, we're gonna have another person from uh, my canvas. Meg is gonna join in in a bit and do the live demonstration. And we also have several other members of the My Canvas team um, joining in. They're not gonna talk or pop up their video, but they're here to answer your questions. So um, I think it's gonna be a really nice uh, webinar for the next few minutes. Um, I'm just gonna give you a little intro on My Canvas. Our mission, uh, what we work towards every day is to bring people together and help bond generations by turning their family history into art and books and gifts that bring um, your past and all your stories that made you you into the present. So you can share it um, with younger generations and other people in your family around you. We do this through our exclusive partnership with Ancestry. So we do have products um, that you can make for example, our family history books, where you can log into your Ancestry account and pull your data through um, to make some of our items. But we are not Ancestry.com. We are partners, but we're not um, part of the same company. So we're a much smaller team. Actually, most almost our entire team is on, on this webinar right now. So um, we just love what we do, turning all the data that you collect either on Ancestry or um, like lots of people in a spreadsheet or in a notebook or a handwritten um, book of records, we like to turn that into something beautiful that you can share with your family or have on display in your home. So that's probably enough about us, <laughs> my canvas for now. We want to learn a little bit about you. So we um, put together a poll that is going to um, pop up for you <laughs> somewhere in your uh, window soon. You'll see um, a new window pop up and it has a question that we're curious to know uh, with everyone here today at the webinar. What is your experience with the My Canvas website? Um, you should see the window now and you'll see the choices um, to answer the question, have you made an order to project on My Canvas? Um, you can answer yes and let us know which product you've made or you can answer no. And this will just help us and help Meg know how uh, much detail to go into and how much of a general overview you're gonna need and how many specifics we can get into in our time together. So I'm always very curious <laughs> and excited to see um, who we've got here today with us. Wow, <laughs> I think this might be the most um, no's we've ever gotten, which is to me really exciting because um, I'm just uh, glad for the opportunity to share with you guys uh, just how our website works and how you guys can use it. But yeah, it looks like we have uh, some people have made either a poster, a book, or a calendar, um, but most people have not made anything on our site yet. So that's exciting. And I know Meg will make sure she's extra clear um, explaining how to make one of our posters. Um, one more thing quick before we jump into the demo with Meg is we want you to be able to ask questions as we go along. Like I said, we've got some folks standing by to answer them. And the way you'll do that is if you look towards the bottom of your Zoom screen, there should be an option that says Q&A for question and answer. Um, and if you click that, you'll see a window with a spot for you to type in a question that you have, or you can even read the questions that other people have asked. So if anything comes up and you want answered, feel free to type it in. Um, we will be covering quite a bit on how to make and edit and perfect and order your poster. So if it's a question on something that you think we might cover um, by the end of the demonstration, then maybe just hold on to it and, and see if it gets answered. Or you can scroll through the questions and see if it's already been asked. Um, 
But if you just, yeah, have a burning question, feel free to type it in there and we will answer it as quick as we can. And also when the demonstration has ended, we'll take a little bit of time to answer a few more questions because I'm sure they'll, they'll pop up right at the end there. So now I'm excited to hand it over um, to Meg, who's going to show us just how to make a poster. You might uh, recognize Meg if you watch any of our YouTube videos. You'll recognize her voice because she's demonstrated a bunch of features um, and a few other webinars that you can watch over there. So take it away, Meg. Thanks, Laurel. So like Laurel mentioned, I'm going to walk through today how to build a My Canvas family history poster and then give you some tips and tricks for editing that poster. So this type of poster is built without an Ancestry account or any Ancestry data. So the nice thing about it is you can build it all from scratch. But before you start your project, you're going to want to make sure that you either log in with your My Canvas account or create an account if you're a new customer. So you'll head up to this upper right hand corner and choose the log in button when you're on the My Canvas homepage. And then on the right side here, you'll see a spot to enter an email and a password and choose if you're a new customer or a returning customer. And then you can create an account or sign in and hit that log in button and then you're ready to go. So that'll make sure that all the things that you're creating are saved to your account and you can access them in the future. So once you've logged in, you can head to the product section in the top toolbar and then choose the My Canvas Family History section and select the My Canvas Family Tree poster. We offer several kinds of posters. So we offer standard, combination, and descendant trees for our posters. And they range in size from 16 by 20 to 36 by 48 inches. So a wide range of sizes and types. Um, you'll be able to select this uh, these choices once you've actually built your family tree. So we're going to hit continue to get moving on building our tree. So you'll start by choosing create a new family tree. And here you'll enter what you want your um, tree to be called. And then you'll enter the first person. So like the starting person of your tree. And you can always add um, people either as descendants or ancestors after this person, but this just gets it started for you. So I'm going to type that in here. Um, you can choose whether uh, the gender is male or female and the, the, they are deceased or still alive. And then you can enter the birth information and death information if you have it. If you don't have it, you can skip it. Um, you can still enter a person without any of this information. All right. So now that I've entered that information, I'm ready to start a new tree. So when I select that button, you'll see here a blank canvas that's gonna let you build out your tree and add all of your ancestors and descendants. You can see that a profile has been created for my starting person, Philip, and now I can expand from there using this plus sign in the corner of this uh, profile. So when I hit that button, I'm then able to add either a mother, a father, or a spouse, right away. And I'm going to choose to add father to start. And you can see that now a blank profile has appeared. Um, to edit that profile or any profile within the editor, you just click on it. And again, that box will pop up that lets you enter the information that we just talked about. Give me a moment here while I enter some info. And we have a really awesome um, location picker here. So there's some technology there that will help you find and format uh, locations in a really nice way. So you can see when I type New York, there's lots of options there for me to choose from. All right, and once I've entered all that information, I am going to hit save person. And you can see here that um, the father has been added. So I'm gonna just add a few more here just for demonstration's sake. So you can see the process of building out um, the people in your tree. So if I hit the plus sign on Alexander Hamilton, I'm able to add his mother or father as well as his spouse. So I'm going to add a spouse 
Again, I get that blank card that I can click on to edit. And then you'll notice here, since I've added a spouse, I have now the birthplace, the death place, but also the marriage place and date that I can enter. And that will also then appear on Alexander Hamilton's card as well. So the spouse will get the marriage populated automatically. All right, so I'm gonna save Elizabeth. And you can see they've been connected here. And when I click on Alexander Hamilton's card, I can see that he's married to Elizabeth now. And that information I added on Elizabeth's card has been populated into his card. Um, you can also add a profile person, a profile photo for each person in your tree. And you can do that by heading to the photos tab right here when you have this box open, it's on the top. And when you click that, you're then able to add a photo from your desktop or device. So you can browse for the photo you'd like. And you can see it's been added here. If I hit save person, then the photo will appear within my tree, which is kind of a, a cool thing and a nice visual. And then all the photos you add here will then populate over to your tree and you'll be able to make adjustments, crop them, um, change them if you need to at the next steps. So you can also, once you've added um, couples, you can choose the plus sign and enter uh, son or daughter. Additionally, now that they're um, married and they have the ability to add the son and daughter. Um, and you can also, if you accidentally add someone and you no longer want that person, so I don't want a wife here for Philip, I can select that card. And in the bottom left-hand corner, I can choose delete person and that will remove that person. So then I can choose, um, once I've built out a few things, I can choose done in the upper right-hand corner when I'm done building things out. And I'm gonna actually pull up a tree that I've already built out so I can show you a little bit more about the editor um, and let you see kind of what a full tree looks like. So when I select this tree that I've already built out, it looks a little lackluster, like there's not as many people in here as, as there should be. However, um, one of the features of this builder is that we kind of collapse branches of the trees to make it a little less um, chaotic of a view for you. But if you wanna see the full branches for anyone, you might see this, um, I'll zoom in here, this little green tree symbol, you can click on that and it will expand the branches of your tree. So you can see here now all the people that I've added in my tree, I've added a few photos. Um, and so it's just an, an easy way to expand different branches of the tree that you've added. You can also use this search bar in the upper right-hand corner of the builder to find um, people within your tree. So you can type a name and you can see the profiles that you have, and then it will kind of move you to the right spot of the tree. And then another way to navigate around your tree while you're building it is this bottom left-hand corner where you can um, use the zoom buttons, the plus and the minus to zoom in or out. And then you can see there's an orange box around the tree in the part of the tree that I'm in. So you can drag that box around in your tree to move yourself. You can also just drag the screen, click and hold and drag the screen. And then if you are getting lost in your tree, there's a lot of branches and you're not sure where you are anymore. You can use this little um, square button here with a dot in the middle. If you click that, it will back you out and you can see your whole tree in a snapshot. So those are some um, nice navigational things that'll help you while you're building your tree. And so basically it's just a repetitive process of the, the steps that I showed you earlier of choosing the plus sign, adding the relation, entering the information and a photo if you have it. So once you've done all that and you have a completed tree, you're back to this page. So um, the nice thing too about the My Canvas Builder is you can have many trees here that you can make posters for. Um, so I'm going to choose this tree that I've built out 
And then I'm going to select the starting person. If there's a spouse for that starting person, you'll be able to select them here as well. And now you're able to configure your creation. So earlier we talked about the different types of posters we offer. So we have a combination poster, which starts with a couple and then branches out for their direct line of ancestors for each person in the starting couple. That poster allows you to go up to seven generations. We offer a descendant poster, which starts with a couple and then lists all of their descendants up to their great grandchildren. So that goes up to four generations. And then we also have a standard poster, which starts with one person and shows their direct line of ancestors. And that is our um, largest poster we offer. It goes up to nine generations and that poster is three feet by four feet big. So it's a very, a large poster with a lot of information. So if you've got a lot of ancestors, you can really do a lot with the standard type of poster. So I'm gonna choose a standard five generation poster for this demonstration. And once I've selected all of this information, I can hit preview your creation and we will take all that data that you just entered and turn it into a tree for you. So here you can see that my tree has been created and um, there's a lot of information here. It looks pretty good, but there might be some things that you want to change. Uh, but first, before you change anything, you're gonna wanna make sure you save your project. So up here in the top toolbar, there is a uh, creation saving tool where you can enter a title for your project and then you can hit the save button. And that means everything that you do to this tree moving forward will be saved under this name. So um, it's just an easy way to make sure you know what project you're working on and keep all of your changes. So once you've saved, you can begin editing your poster. And one of the first changes you can see is right here on the left-hand side. We offer three styles for our poster, our classic style, which has this tree in the background, we offer a modern style, which is a little more modern fonts and some um, colorful shapes. We offer a vintage style poster, which has a more plain background um, and a little uh, bit more fanciful borders. So I'm going to pick the modern um, style for today. Uh, one thing I wanted to mention though, is you'll wanna make sure you pick your style right away. If you change it, mid project, once you've edited um, your text styles or your sizes of font, if you, uh, for example, make this purple and then uh, you've made a bunch of things, different colors, if you change styles midway, it will delete all the changes that you've made and make all your styles go back to the text that matches that style. So pick your style right away and then uh, move forward with it for, for the easiest uh, time making your poster. So let's start by editing text. I'm gonna zoom in here so it's a little bit easier to see. And the first thing you might notice on your page are little plus signs that uh, appear with blank space. And this happens when there's a part of the tree that maybe you didn't have a person for and you didn't fill that in. Um, and so those will appear. They won't print on your poster so you can just leave them and. Uh, not do anything with them if you don't have any information for them. Um, but if you do, and you'd like to edit one of these plus sign placeholders, all you have to do is double click, and then you can type in the information for the person. Um, and if you click away from it, then your text will be saved. Um, again, you don't have to add anything for a placeholder. You can just leave it blank and it won't print on your poster. Um, but if you want to remove it, you can simply select it and then use the trash can in the upper right hand corner to delete any element off your page. And you can do that for the plus sign space holders or anything on your page. To edit existing text, so if you have a piece of text that you want to change something about, all you have to do is double click. So again, you'll, you'll see that flashing cursor and that means you can change anything on your poster. So I'm going to remove this marriage date um, because I know that it's not correct and I don't want it on there anymore. So while I have this selected, um, you can see a top toolbar appears whenever I have text selected um, and it allows you to do many things to your text. So one of the things you can do is change the alignment of your text. 
So you can choose to align your text left or right. Um, I'm gonna keep mine center because that's the formatting that already is there and I like the way that looks. You can also change the color of your text. So we've got a color picker here. If you select this letter A, you can choose from a bunch of predetermined colors or kind of move around within this bar to kind of pick your own colors. Um, I'm gonna choose purple. It's nice and bright and we can see it easily. And then you can also change the size of your text. So right here, there's a font size picker and you can use these arrows to make your text bigger or smaller. So you can see here, I've made this text really big. Um, I can also change the style of the font um, with this font picker. So if you want to call attention to something using a different font, you can pick from a whole library of font, which is pretty cool. So now you might notice that I um, made this much bigger. It's kind of encroaching on this, um, this photo below it. Uh, so you want to keep an eye out for that. You can make text very big, but you just want to make sure it's not encroaching on things around it. So um, one way that you can change that is um, making the font smaller. Uh, one other way that you can change that is, let me show an example here. So if I make this title of this person's name really big, you can see it jumps onto two lines. And if I want to make it all on one line, but still keep it a bigger size, I can change the size of my text box. So if I hover my mouse over this white um, square while my text is selected, I can click and hold and then drag my box out to resize it. So that lets me keep my big font and then I can um, put the text all back on one line so it's not overlapping anything anymore. You can also move any piece of text by clicking on it and holding it and then dragging it wherever you need to on the screen. And one other thing that you can do for um, pieces of text, and it's a nice trick to know how to do, is duplicate an existing piece of text. So if you have a style that you like, so we spent time making this purple, we changed the style, um, and we'd like to use that again to fill in information about someone else, you can select any piece of text on your page and then head to the upper right-hand corner and choose the duplicate elements button. And you can see a second piece of text has appeared. I can click and drag that wherever I'd like it to go on my page. And then I can double click to um, edit the text. I can remove or change. Um, and I already have some formatting here for the birthday. And I can add the information that I'm missing and have the same format that I just spent time uh, making. So that's a really nice trick to know is how to duplicate text. And then one final thing I wanted to show, which is really helpful with um, text and photos is a new tool that we just added. Um, we just added a ruler in the top and on the side of the builder. So when you're zoomed in, the, the ruler zooms to closer measurements, but when you zoom out, you can see there's a ruler along the top here. And then whenever you select an element, the ruler shades gray. So you can see right where that is lining up. If you want it to be at a certain measurement on the ruler, you can kind of drag it and watch that line. There's a gray box on the left side and also on the top that you can use to help align. And you'll also see blue dotted lines appear now and again to help you center things as well. And then we've also added a grid. So at any time, uh, you don't have to have anything selected even, you can use this show grid button in the top toolbar and you can see a grid up here. And if I zoom in a little more here, you can see the grid a little bit more in detail here. And it's just really helpful to line up photos, line up text. So it's a nice feature that a lot of people enjoy using. And then you can hide it at any time as well. So next we'll work on changing photos and adding photos. So you can access photos that you've already uploaded in your tree. So back in that previous step when we built our tree, you can head to this photo section on the left-hand side and you can see any photos that have already been added by you. Um, and this is also where you can upload photos from your computer. So I'm gonna upload a few photos that I forgot to upload 
previously in my tree. And to do that, you'll just select the upload photo button. And then again, browse your file for what you need. And you can upload multiple files at a time. So if you've got, you know, 15 photos that you need to upload, you can do them all at one time. Um, we just require them to be a JPEG or PNG file. So one of the most popular questions we get asked is how, how do you swap out a photo? So I have an avatar here for Philip, and I do have a photo of Philip. So I want to switch that out. And it's really, really easy. You just simply select the photo that you want to replace and then click on the photo that you want it to be. So I'm going to head over here to my photo section. I'm going to click on this photo here. And you can see it's just been swapped right out. And you can do that for any photo on your page. It's very easy. Um, you can also edit the photo that you've added. So just like we edited text with the top toolbar, you can also edit um, your photo at the top toolbar. So you can round the corners of your photo uh, using this rounded corners button. So a rectangle will become an oval and a square photo will become a circle. Um, if you don't like the rounded corners, you can always change it back. You can also add a border to your photo. Um, by default, there's a level two thickness border around all photos on your page, but you can change that to zero if you don't want any border, or you can make it a little thicker if you'd like to really call attention to something. And you can also change the color of the border, much like we did the text. You can also crop any image that you have on your page. So to crop, you'll select the crop button, and then you can either change the size and shape of your crop box. So this is me making the photo a little more square, or you can select um, with your mouse, the circle of the picture and click on that to drag out or in to zoom or um, make smaller the photo within the crop box. So I'm gonna crop mine more, a little more square here. I'm happy with that. And I'm gonna hit done in the top toolbar. You can also resize photos in the same way that we resize text by hovering your mouse over the white block in the corner of the photo, clicking and holding your mouse to drag out or drag in. So that'll make it big or small. And then you can click with your mouse, hold and drag a photo anywhere on your page. You can also add things like embellishments to your project and you can access those by heading to our embellishments library, which is on the left hand toolbar um, in the editor. And you can see when I've opened embellishments, we have a huge library for you of um, flags and frames, flowers, you name it. There's all sorts of things that you can use on your project. I'm going to add a frame because I really like the way that our frames look when you add them to a poster. So I'm going to click on the frame category. And then to add a frame, you can just scroll through until you find one that you like and just click on it. And when you click on it, um, it's a little bit bigger than you need it to be. So you can, again, use that resizing tool by hovering your mouse, clicking on the corner white box and dragging it down, 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 down to make it smaller. And then you can click on it and drag it to wherever you'd like it to be. So mine's still a little too big. I'm gonna just keep resizing it and you can um, just kind of keep playing with it till it gets to a size that you like. And I can see here that my um, text is now covered by my frame. And an easy way to fix that is you can select um, two pieces of text at one time by clicking and dragging around. So you can see they're now both selected. And then you can click and hold with your mouse to drag it, or you can use the arrow keys on your keyboard to move pieces of text up and down. And you can actually select many elements at once with that method. So you can click and drag around anything to select a, a bunch of pieces at one time, and you can then easily move that group of items at the same time. And then the other embellishment I just wanted to show that I kind of like to add is a like a swirl or a flourish. It really kind of adds a little bit of fun to your page. And so again, you can use that embellishment library to search your library. 
um, for the category that you want. And then if you find one that you like, I'm gonna choose this one. Um, and then you can just click and drag that on your page. So it's really easy to add the embellishments. You simply click on them and then they appear on your page for you to move and place wherever you'd like. So that looks pretty good to me. And I actually might want to use this embellishment again, but on the page, but I don't wanna like have to go look for it again. So we have a feature called favoriting. So you can favorite any embellishment or any photo. And to do that, you can hover over the embellishment you'd like to favorite and click on the heart in the upper left-hand corner. So you can do that again for multiple embellishments in any category. And then to access them again in the future without having to go through everything again, you can head to the favorite section on the left-hand side and head to the embellishment section where you can now see the embellishments that I favorited. So that's a, a pretty brief uh, synopsis of all the editing features that we have once you've built your poster. Um, again, you want to make sure you save your project. So before you do anything else and step away, save it one more time. Um, and then I'm about ready to send it back to Laurel. But before I do, I just wanted to share a few examples of complete descendant posters as well as combination posters. So this that we've been working on, again, is that standard poster layout. This is an example of a combination poster that starts with two and branches out. And then this is an example of our descendant poster that starts with a couple and shows all of their descendants. So I'm gonna send this back to Laurel here for a little bit of a break and then we'll be right back. Thanks, Meg. Um, that was fun. There's so much you can do when you're making a poster, but when you go step-by-step, step, it really is simpler than it kind of seems when you see a finished poster and how beautiful it can look. Um, I did want to answer a couple of questions that have came up while Meg was talking. Um, and then I'm going to show you some examples of some physical posters that I have printed out right here with me. Um, so you can see more than just the corner that's right behind Meg, I see a poster on the wall next door. Um, one thing we had some questions about, if you have your information on ancestry.com already, do you have to build out your family tree like you saw Meg doing at the very beginning? And the answer to that is no, you can just import the data directly from your Ancestry account. Um, the only difference is at the beginning, it, on our site, it's listed as a different product. It's called the Ancestry Family History Poster. So just make sure you choose the Ancestry Family History Poster, then click Get Started, and you'll be able to pull that data right away. Um, this product, which we call the My Canvas Family History Poster, very similar name, is made completely on My Canvas. So it's perfect for people who don't have an Ancestry account, or if your coworker says, can you make me a poster? I have it all written down on this paper. <laughs> can you do it for me? Um, you don't need access to their Ancestry account. You could take their paper and just like Meg did, uh, build out the tree and turn it into a beautiful poster. Um, if you do have an Ancestry account and you just watched all this, you didn't waste your time because as soon as she made the poster and started editing text, editing photos, uh, moving things around, the poster maker with an Ancestry account looks exactly the same. So you just learned a bunch of uh, tips that you can definitely use if you make our Ancestry family history poster. And we also have done a webinar um, that starts from the very beginning of that Ancestry poster that's on our YouTube channel. So you can search for it on YouTube or after this webinar, we'll send out an email uh, with a link to rewatch this webinar. And I'll also include the link to the Ancestry Family Tree poster webinar in case you wanna go back and watch maybe just the beginning of that one to make sure that you're getting started uh, with the right product. Um, there was one more question. Nope, that was it. <laughs> I will send the link. The other question was, will there be a link to this webinar? There will be. Um, but now I'm gonna show you a couple of posters I have in front of me. This is a combination poster, uh, like Meg just showed that starts with two people and uh, their ancestors on both sides and lists a few descendants here in the middle. I think it's a nice format. And it also has our um, wooden poster rails on it that we have available for most sizes of the poster that we carry. Um, this size of poster, I, I did not write it on the back, but I just wanted to show you, I just pulled off the poster rails to show you how easy it is. Um, this was the bottom rail that you just saw on the poster I was holding. And what it has is two pieces of wood with magnets in the middle. So it really takes 
you know, a matter of seconds to snap it onto your poster and be ready to hang it up on the wall. Um, so I think that's just a handy hanging solution that we offer um, if you don't want to go out and search for a frame that fits, but you can also always go find a frame that fits if that's what you prefer. Um, here's just another example, because so I've got some sun coming in the window, um, of a, it's not a combination poster, it's just a single person and all their descendants um, going backwards. This one is 24 by 18, so pretty big and in the nice modern style that I like. Um, but not our biggest. Here I have an example of one of our biggest posters. I need to scoot my seat back <laughs> to share this with you guys. But this is a descendant poster with all four generations and it's 36 inches, so it's three feet wide <laughs> by 24 inches tall. So <laughs> you can see that our posters do get very big. If you have a nice big family, you can fit them on. Um, the paper that it's printed on, I don't know if you can hear how thick it is, but it is very thick um, photo quality paper. So the photos print out very nicely. Um, and it's also archival quality, which means that the inks are made to not fade. Um, if you have it displayed on your wall for years and years, it should look um, just as beautiful uh, for future generations to enjoy forever. So those were some of the poster sizes and styles that we have. I also wanted to show you one more thing. Meg will show you how to add a gift note to your poster. So if you are ordering this as a gift for a family member, um, you can choose to add a gift note, choose which style you want. We will print it out just like this, put it in an envelope and stick it right in the order. So you can ship it directly to a family member or friend's house. Um, and we put all of our posters in a very sturdy tube, actually very sturdy. Um, and if you order rails with it, it'll be added into a nice box. So we take a lot of care because we know you guys take a lot of care um, gathering all the information and going through all the work to put the poster together. Um, we make sure it arrives uh, safe and sound and in really good quality right to your door. So um, we're gonna do one more poll to give you guys a chance <laughs> to let us know a tiny bit more about you um, before I hand it back to Meg to kind of wrap up how you would order your poster and get it sent to your doorstep. Um, this last question, we are curious where you are located. So another um, poll window should pop up in just a second. Um, and we've divided it up by time zone. So we're curious, are you on the East Coast, Central, Mountain Time, Pacific, or outside of the US or another, or outside of the uh, continental US or in another time zone altogether? Um, the My Canvas team is a little bit spread out. Um, Meg and I are both in Central Time here in Wisconsin, um, but we do have people in Eastern Time um, and kind of spread out a little bit. All right, and the Eastern Time Zone takes it <laughs> with uh, about half of the participants are on the East Coast. Um, so that's interesting to see, we have been, uh, the last couple webinars we had at different times, and we're curious if the time affects who can join, because um, I know it's a little bit early for those of you um, on Pacific time. So thanks for joining us. I'm glad there's a handful of you guys here. Um, now we are, Meg's going to um, show you a little bit about who, how to wrap up and check out with your family poster. So I am sharing my screen once again. And so we, we made our poster and we stepped away. Sometimes you can't, you know, you gotta go do other things in life before you can finish up. So once you've um, saved your poster and you're ready to go back uh, and take a look, you can head to my projects from the homepage of mycanvas.com. And here you'll see all of your creations that you can pick back up. So if you've made multiple drafts of posters, they'll all be listed here. Um, and until you place the order, that's where you'll find your drafts. So I see that my Hamilton demo poster is right here. So I'm going to choose edit. Um, and that will take me right back into the poster we were working on. Um, if I had any more changes to make, I wanted to add a few more flourishes. I could do that now, but I'm ready to add it to the cart. So it's very easy to do that. You just hit the add to cart button in the upper right hand corner. And then you can see there's a little box that appears. Um, it just asks you to really make sure you've confirmed your project. You've looked at all the 
the text, it's spelled correctly, the dates are correct. Since this is a custom printed product, once you send it through as an order, we're unable to make any changes. And so what you have entered is what you will get. So we just ask that you really make sure it's what you want it to be before you add it to your cart. If you wanted to add those rails that Laurel was talking about, it will automatically uh, give you the right size rail right here. Um, and you can use this toggle button to add the set of rails. You can also choose the color. Um, and then uh, if you add it, you can enter it here um, or you can say, no, thanks. So this is your cart. If you have any other um, projects, multiple posters that you're wanting to order at the same time, you'll see them all here. And then you can hit checkout. And when you hit checkout, you'll be um, taken to the final page of the cart where you can enter your shipping information. And then here's where you can add that gift note Laurel was talking about. So you can select this check mark and you've got um, a box here where you can type a message. Boy. And then you can also change the design. So there's a little um, circle with three dots here and we offer three options of design. You can choose your shipping speed and then you can enter your payment information. So once you've placed your order um, and hit the paid button, you'll be taken back to the home page, and um, it'll be a, a few days before you'll get your project. We have to print it and pack it and ship it to you. But in the meantime, there's a couple cool things you can do with the order you just placed. So if you head to the My Account section in the upper right-hand corner, and then head to the Orders section, you can see a list of all of your placed orders. And if you hit Show Detail, there's a couple different things that you can do. You can use the share creation button, which is one of my favorite features to share your creation with anyone you'd like to see it. So you can enter a title for your creation, who made it and a description if you'd like to add some more information. And then you have a link here that you can copy and either email or text to friends or family members who might be interested in either taking a look at your poster or what they'll see is this page right here. So they can see the whole tree, a preview of it, and then they can add a copy to their own cart and place their own order for it. So um, they can order it right there if they want. And there's also your code listed here. Um, everyone has a share code associated with their account. So if they use your code, then you get $10 off your next order and they get $10 off their order. So it's kind of a neat feature. From this orders page, you can also add a copy to your cart to just make another copy and send it somewhere else. So say you're sending one to your sister and your brother and they live different places, you can just add a duplicate copy of what you just ordered and just enter a new address at checkout and, and send it through that way. You don't have to rebuild the whole thing. Or if you need to make a change, so like you need to swap out the starting person because it's for your brother instead of your sister, you can hit continue with creation and it will create a duplicate version of the poster you were just working on. You're able to start editing it, change things, whatever you need to make, and then you can add it to your cart um, without doing all that work all over again. So it's kind of a neat feature um, and that's really all I've got. So. I'm gonna send it back to Laurel. Sweet, yeah, that's um, start to finish, how you can make your own uh, family tree poster. Uh, we did have some questions coming in while Meg was talking. And um, we, let's see, we already touched on, if you have ancestry data, you can go ahead and make that ancestry poster. Um, one more question, I know we went over it kind of quickly, but can you, um, go over again the three styles of poster that we have available. You bet. So the three styles of posters that we have available are the standard. So that's what I was working on today. And that ranges in generations from five to nine. Thank you, Laurel. Um, and so the sizes of the posters kind of are um, aligned with how much information's on the poster. So a five generation poster is 24 by 18, but a nine generation poster is the three feet by four feet poster because 
if you try to put all that information on a 24 by 18 poster, you can't really read the text. There's not a uh, font small enough that would fit and that you could still read. So the size is, is dependent on how many generations. Um, the next type of, uh, oh, and a standard poster, it's one person again, and it includes their direct line of ancestors. A combination poster starts with a couple in the middle and then branches out. And that includes um, a spot for children underneath the couple and then their direct line of ancestors as Laurel's showing. Uh, the maximum number of generations for this poster is seven. So we have up to seven that we are able to fit on a poster. And then for a descendant, which is our newest poster, that starts with an individual or a couple, and that includes their children. So it comes down to descendants. So their children, grandchildren, and great-grandchildren. And we offer only up to four due to the number of grandchildren and children that can be in certain families. It is too much to fit on a poster. Um, and it, I did see someone ask a question about why I can't get the smaller size poster for my four generations. And that does have to deal with um, the, again, the amount of information going on the poster is correlated with the size. So I think um, we'll definitely be getting some YouTube content up soon about how to make your descendant poster because there's some extra tricks you can do to really fill out the space with the information if you have a smaller um, family that you're putting on the poster. So keep your eyes peeled and subscribe to our YouTube and we'll be getting that up here in the next couple of weeks. Yeah. And it's the, the last question we saw kind of variations on a few times is like, can I add um, additional stories about my family or someone wanted to add another like city associated with a family member that's not necessarily from their birth or their death. And Meg did show um, how to, you know, duplicate a text box. You can have an entirely new text box and add a story in about somebody. She also showed how to edit the text box with like the birth and death information where you can definitely just like hit enter, add a new line, add some more information. So um, it was kind of like, we didn't explicitly say how to do it, but she did show how to edit text. So um, you can either uh, rewatch this webinar when we send the link and uh, kind of look for that certain spot. Or on our YouTube, we also have um, a bunch of smaller videos that go over specific features, like just how to edit a photo or how to add an embellishment. And so if you just look for the video on editing text within your project, um, that will give you a good like step-by-step -step view on how you can add some of that additional information that doesn't automatically populate onto your poster. Um, so that was fun to see. It just helps me imagine all the like beautiful posters that are gonna be made um, with people's stories. And I just, I just love thinking <laughs> about all of those. Um, so that kind of wraps up some of the more frequent questions that we saw. Um, if you do have additional questions, um, maybe after the webinar, you think of something, or if you're re-watching and something pops up, um, you can always email us or uh, just look on our website. Um, we have lots of articles um, and like I mentioned, YouTube videos that explain things. So the easiest way to get help from us um, after this webinar is on every page on our website, on the top right corner, there's a question mark. <laughs> you can click on that and get to our help center for um, articles with some common answers. And um, you can see our email address right on the screen right now. It's help at mycanvas.com. Hopefully easy to remember, and I'll include it in the email I send out today um, that you can just send us your questions directly. And some of the helpful folks that have been in the FAQ, uh, Caitlin and Jasmine and Janelle answering your questions, will be happy to answer uh, your emails uh, if you have questions that come up uh, while you're making your poster. That pretty much wraps it up. Thank you so much for coming. Um, we're excited to have all of you here. And like I said, keep an eye out um, probably at the later end of today for an email from me <laughs> that'll have the link to this webinar if you want to rewatch. And like I said, links to a few more resources like some of our other YouTube videos or that Ancestry Family History poster if you want to make one of those. Um, so I'll be uh, sending some information your way in the next few hours. Thanks so much for coming, everybody.